another video. So today I just wanted to talk to you guys about how, you know, God is still with you when it comes to, you know, trials and tribulations. Even in your darkest moments, God is still with you, okay? It may not seem like it, it may not feel like it, but God is still with you, okay? Nothing and nobody, nothing and nobody can stop God from doing whatever he has called for you to do, okay? So if God has promised you something, Nobody can stop it, okay? It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what they try to put on you. It doesn't matter what they try to put against you. Whatever God has called you to do, you're still going to it's still going to happen, okay? And so we see this example when it comes to Joseph. For the ones who don't know about Joseph, um I'll just give you a brief summary. So basically, you know, Joseph was hated by his brothers and his brothers ended up selling selling him into slavery, okay? But what his brothers did not know, because they, they did this intentionally, they did this on purpose, and they thought that, they thought that, you know, selling his brothers into slavery was going to stop him from becoming a ruler one day, because Joseph, you know, was bragging about his dreams and saying, you know, you guys are going to bow down to me one day, right? But his brothers thought, okay, if we, you know, if we try to come up with a plot, you know, to destroy you then that's going to stop you from becoming a ruler. But it didn't. Their plan actually put them, it, it actually put Joseph in the right position to become a ruler. So what I'm telling you guys is that no one or nothing, okay? No one or no situation can stop you from getting to where God has caused you to be at, okay? People may be trying to do things to you. Situations may may look like, you know, you're never going to get to where God has, uh, where God wants you to be. But I promise you, I promise you, you will still get to where you need to be, okay? Everything will still be ordained by God. Nothing can stop God from doing what he wanted you to do in the first place, okay? So if we come from Genesis chapter 39, starting at verse 1, it says, after Joseph had been taken to Egypt by the Israelites, Potiphar, an Egyptian, one of Pharaoh's officials and the manager of his household, bought him, bought him from them. As it turned out, God was with Joseph and things went very well with him. He ended up living in the home of his Egyptian master. His master recognized that God was with him, saw that God was working for good in everything he did. He became very fond of Joseph and made him his personal aide. He put him in charge of all of his personal affairs, turning everything over to him. From that moment on, God blessed the home of the Egyptian all because of Joseph. So I'm going to stop right there. So in this scripture, Joseph was just Joseph was just sold over to the Egyptian, okay? So now Potiphar owns him, okay? Potiphar owns him. But when it says in verse 2, as it turned out, God was with Joseph and things went very well with him. So even though he's a slave, things are actually going well for him. Things are still going well for him. Becoming a slave did not stop the favor, okay? That's a word for somebody. Becoming a slave did not stop the favor, okay? Nothing can stop the favor of God. If the favor of God is on you, nothing can stop it. Not even a bad situation. Not even your enemy can stop it. So then it says, his master recognized that God was with him, saw that God was working for good in everything he did. He became very fond of Joseph and made him his personal aid. So Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. Potiphar saw it, okay? Potiphar saw that Joseph had favor. Even though he was a slave, even though he was sold for no reason, Potiphar saw the favor, okay? The favor was still on, jo on Joseph. And so what I'm telling you is that you may be in a situation that you don't want to be in right now. Maybe somebody put you in that situation. Or maybe, you know... Um, something led to you being in that situation, but it's okay because it's all going to work out for your good. Okay. It was meant for evil, but it's all going to work out for your good. Okay. 
And so even though Joseph is a slave right now, things are still working well for him. Even Potiphar's house is being blessed because Joseph is, is there. Do you guys know that there are some jobs out there that, that are being blessed? There are some careers that are being blessed because you are there. There are some schools that are being blessed because you are there. There are some households that are being blessed because you are there. Some people have the favor of God, okay? It may not feel like it. It may not look like it. But you have the favor of God, and God is still with you through the good and through the bad. And so um, it says, from that moment on, God blessed the home of the Egyptian, all because of Joseph. The blessing of God spread over everything he owned at at, at home and in the field. And all Potiphar had to concern himself with was eating three meals a day. So basically what the scripture is saying that because Joseph was there, the Potiphar didn't have to worry about a thing. He knew that Joseph was going to take care of it. He trusted in Joseph. Okay, so just think about it. Just put your, put yourself in Joseph's shoes, okay? You're hated by your brothers. You're hated by your family, okay? Your family uh, basically sells you over to be a slave. And here you are being in charge of somebody else's household. They trust you. They trust you. Even though you're a slave, they trust you. They don't have to worry about a thing. They don't even check on you. They don't even check on you because they know that that you're going to take care of everything. So you have that favor. Joseph had that favor. All right. So then I'm going to skip over to verse um, verse 18. Okay. I'm going to skip over to verse 18. It says, she kept his, she kept his coat right there until his master came home. She told him the same story. She said, the Hebrew slave, the one you brought to us, came after me and tried to use me for his plaything. When I yelled and screamed, he left his coat with me and ran outside. When his master heard his wife's story telling him, these are the things your slave did to me, he was furious. Joseph's master took him and threw him into jail where the king's prisoners were locked up. But there in jail, God was still with Joseph. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there. So you guys, will, if you don't know the story already, you're going to have to read it for yourself. But basically what this scripture is talking about where, you know, Joseph is falsely accused. Okay, Potiphar's wife started to tempt Joseph and basically she wanted to sleep with Joseph and Joseph denied her. So she wanted to cry wolf and she basically, you know, told Potiphar that he tried to break tried to rape her okay so this wasn't true but this led to him now um going to jail okay he was falsely accused but now he's going to jail so just think about it you already a slave your brothers already hate you okay you're enslaved because of your family and now you're being falsely accused now you're being locked up twice okay because so, because for a slave you already don't have your freedom so you're basically locked up but now he's double locked up because now he's in jail he's in prison so with that being said it's like some of you guys may think okay it's one thing after another but no this is god's plan this is god's plan what i'm trying to show you guys is that sometimes when it feels like you know you're going through one thing after another it may be God's plan, okay? You may not feel like it. It may not look like it, but it may be God's plan because it's going to lead you to where God wants you to be. And so it says, but there in jail, God was still with Joseph, okay? So even in the darkest places, even when you feel locked up, even when you feel like you don't have your freedom, God is still with you. If we keep reading, it says, he reached out in kindness to him. He put him on good terms with the head jailer, okay? This is God. God is reaching out reaching out to Joseph in kindness. He's putting him on good terms with the head jailer. The head jailer put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. He ended up managing the whole operation. The head jailer gave Joseph 
free reign, never, never even checked on him because God was with him. Whatever he did, God made sure it worked out for the best. Y'all, Joseph is still, still having favor, even in prison, even in prison. He still got the favor. God is still with him. So what, what am I telling you? No matter what situation you're in, God is still going to be with you, okay? He may not bring you out of that situation, but he's going to be with you. He's going to walk you through it. He's going to be there with you so that, so that you can walk with him, all right? And so basically, God elevated Joseph again, but in prison. Now, I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking, well, what does it matter? I'm in prison. Why, why, you know, what does it matter that, you know, he was elevated? But what I'm trying to tell you is that this was foreshadowing his calling. Because if you know the story of Joseph, you, you know that he eventually becomes the governor of Egypt. He eventually becomes second in command. Okay, so when he was when he was in charge of Potiphar's household, that was a foreshadow of his calling. Okay, then when he gets to prison and the the, the prison the prison guards basically you know put puts him in charge of all the other prisoners. That's a foreshadow that uh, that's basically foreshadowing his calling again. Okay, it's like God is preparing him. God is training him. God is you know basically. Preparing his character, okay? He had to have humility, okay? Because I'm pretty sure when he was accused of rape, it made him um, humble. He had to be humble, okay? He had to be humble. And when there is a, when God is calling you to be a leader, you have to have humility, okay? Because you can't lead God's people and not be humble. So God had to put Joseph into you know, all these circumstances so that it can train Joseph for the perfect moment, okay? Because again, he became second in command. He became governor. So he had to go through all this training, all this intense training. He had to be falsely accused. All this was ordained by God, okay? But guess what? God was with him the whole time. God still showed him favor, even in prison. God still showed him favor, even as a slave. So what I'm telling you is that no matter how low you feel, no matter what your status is, okay? No matter if you are the black sheep of the family, no matter if you're only working part-time, no matter if you're only making uh, $7 an hour, no matter how others try to make you feel, if they try to make you feel less than, let me tell you, God is still, God can still show you favor. He can still show you favor. God can still be with you. God can still elevate you. God can still lead you right to your purpose. Okay? So anyways, I just wanted to encourage you guys real quick. And if if you have time, please read this for yourself. Okay? So that you can get the full story. But I hope that I have encouraged you guys. And I will see you guys in my next video. Okay? I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.